you because ever since we met last time, you have kept us, a lot has happened. We are so grateful even for the success of KESA conference. And we are so grateful, oh God, for every success that you've accorded to each one of us. We are also grateful for the victory you've granted unto us in every challenge and battle we've had. And that is why today we give you thanks. Even as we want to begin um, today's meeting, God, we welcome your mighty presence to dwell with us. And may you open even our inner eyes and open even our inner ears so that as the speaker will be uh, relaying knowledge unto us, we may be quick to grasp what he will be relaying unto us and be able even to apply it. Father, we thank you so much for everyone that is even preparing to join. You are going to give us the stamina enough and even the interest to follow every proceeding of this meeting. Thank you so much. Welcome. In Jesus' name, we pray and we believe. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Joseph, for that prayer. Um, uh, before we start, I'm reminded that... Uh, we need to sing our national anthem as an honor to our country. And before that, uh, we'll just have uh, some house rules to observe to make our meeting uh, flow flawlessly. Kindly, when you join in, mute your mic. If you don't mind, put your face to your name. And then if you have a burning question or a concern, just put it um, in our chat. Or if you need to speak, kindly go to reactions. Uh, and then raise your hand and then we'll see you. Thank you for that. From James, uh, I think Utatu lead Kwa Kuimba National Anthem, if you don't mind. Okay, James, you are waiting. Okay, it was a joke, but because, because you agreed you are singing, I think we can go through. I don't know which one is easy, me, Swahili or my English. <laughs> <laughs> ah, let's let's go with the with the with the English one. Uh, we'll sing at least the first answer. I know that one people can sing. Swahili is better. I don't know who will pitch it. We will pitch for us. Today, Sylvester is not in the house. Today is that day. I, I, I can pitch it for you. I'm driving, but I'll do it. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay, thank you. All right. Oh, God of all creation, bless this all Justice May we do we do it, we do it, we do it, we do we need to we need to remind ourselves to to the words of our national anthem. Thank you guys for tuning in for today's meeting. This is our monthly meeting, our Kesa monthly meeting. And uh, I'm grateful for everyone who found time to join us kindly. If you are here and you are not seeing someone who is supposed to be here, just send them a text or a reminder to tell them to join us because this is where we are. Uh, before we start, I will want to welcome everyone officially on behalf of uh, Kesid Board of Management and assure you you are home, feel at home, feel welcome. Uh, in case of any concern, let, know, let us know if you have a concern. Uh, as I say, let us remind those ones who are joining us. We are streaming live, I believe, on YouTube. 
Yes, uh, Professor. Are we streaming live on YouTube and Facebook? I'm trying to learn this technology. Are you, can you do that? You have you you have the sharing. Who is there? Uh, Joe, can you do that? I'm trying. Let me try to do that. I'm not very good with technology, but I'm trying. But I'm recording it. Okay. Let me try okay. to do that. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'll just welcome everyone. Uh, I would want to recognize everyone who is serving on the student uh, student executive board. Uh, kindly just introduce yourself if you are here by name. Please show us your face so that people get to see who you are. Tell us your university, your course. Keegan, I know you are here. I'm here, but I'm driving, but I'll, okay. I'll introduce myself. Okay, no problem. Uh, so my name is Eric Keegan. I'm at Middle Tennessee State University here in Tennessee. Uh, this is my last year PhD student. I'm doing exercise science, exercise physiology, and I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for this organization. So if, if you know you, if you have any question when you're applying for graduate school and or anything like that, Please reach out. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Derek. We have other guys who are still joining us from wherever they are, wherever they will come, or when we'll be ending the meeting, we'll introduce them. Not to waste time, I'll welcome uh, uh, Professor Gerono, who will in turn welcome our speaker of the day, who came in early in time. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much. Good evening, everybody. Good to see you. I hope the semester has been great. It's a busy time. And uh, just hang on in there. We all, it's, it's rough for all of us, but just keep hanging on in there. And we're always here to stand with you. Uh, thank you for all the students board who are here for the great work that you're doing. And thanks for the advisory board, the leadership board. I see uh, Dr. Machai is a CFO. I saw Wanyama somewhere, Dr. Wanyama, and I'm sure most of the others will be joining us. So again, Karibuni, I see Dr. Wanyama right there. Dr. Wanyama, wave. <laughs> so Dr. Wanyama is there and uh, he's an engineer and Dr. Jess Michai is an engineer and I'm sure others will be coming in. So I wanna thank Dr. Michai for agreeing to be our first one for this uh, academic year. It's been a busy semester, so we'll continue doing this monthly. Uh, just encouraging empowerment just to share together. So thank you so much. Without further ado, I'm going to welcome Dr. Machai. And Dr. Machai, I don't know if I told him this. Uh, if you can share your journey just as an international student before you get into that, I think that would be really empowering as an international student and what you went through. And then you can jump into your, your session. We'll try to keep it to one hour because it's late. So it will give us a presentation and then open session for questions. So Dr. Machai, Karibu Sana. So, but Dr. Machai works as an engineer, he's a mechanical engineer with Cummins, and I don't want to ruin his introduction, so I'll let him do the rest. All right, thank you very much, Professor Gerono, and uh, the entire leadership for the student body and uh, all the attendees. Mjambu uh, Gioni Aleo. Since you are muted, yeah. I assume you are saying Murisema Mjambu. So, it's my pleasure to be here tonight. Um, Looking at time, 15 minutes almost gone. So here is my quick journey. Can you hear me? Just shake your hand. Great. So uh, international student joined, uh, came into US uh, way back then, a few decades ago. Uh, started my undergraduate in Auburn University, Alabama, in the middle of nowhere. I'm an war eagle fan. Uh, studied mechanical engineering. Uh, joined uh, 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 Virginia Tech for my master's and eventually joined uh, North Carolina a &T for my PhD in mechanical engineering and got hired uh, before I even graduated. And the company that hired me waited for me for a year. Uh, and I really, I'm always grateful to God for that opportunity. Uh, my journey was very smooth, if you can believe what I have just said. Uh, it was rough, but here I am today. Now obstacles stood my way. And I'll share a little bit more about myself, um, even as we go along. Today, it's about you and how we can enable you. Tell me when you can see my, if you can see my, my screen. 
Can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, you can. Which one, the presentation mode or, or the presenter version? Can the one with Kelsey on. Yeah, yeah, but I, I want to make sure you, you are seeing the one with full on full screen. Yes, that one. Yes, yes. All right, pa pa perfect. That's the one I wanted. Uh, let me stop video here just because of internet. So I was asked to come and talk a little bit about career path from school to job market as an international student. So everything I'll present today, every page, every word, I thought about it. And my ultimate goal is that somehow one way or the other, by the end of this presentation, you have gotten one or two things that can help you in your career journey. So I'll start with uh, why we are doing this. My purpose slide, the post slide, the purpose is career path for an F1 student in the US job market. What am I expecting as an outcome of this presentation is your awareness and your action uh, thereafter. Uh, the structure, I'm going to make a presentation followed by Q&A, and I intend to spend 20 minutes presenting and 40 minutes for Q&A and I need a timekeeper. Please warn me five minutes before 20 minutes expire, starting now. So a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm a mechanical engineer. Uh, I have, faith takes a center role in my life. Personality and I'm my ISTJ, very practical and fact-minded. Uh, don't, don't argue with me if you don't have numbers. Don't argue with me if you don't have facts. And I will not argue with you if I don't have facts. So I am a very factual person. And uh, ISTJs are known to be very logical. And sometimes that's a detriment to us because if things don't make sense, we, are kind, of, we kind of shy away. But that's my personality type, my values. I value hard work and accomplishments. I don't want, like most of us, we don't want to do any, you know, any work without end results that I can share and be proud of. Proud of. In my sp spare time, I love to travel, uh, family travel. I am a DIY guru, uh, not fanatic. I love to break things and fix things. And my wife loves that because I will, uh, I, 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 I'm always finding myself busy. I do road bike. Uh, my longest ride is 110 miles, and I'm very proud of that. I did it within 12 hours, same day. Uh, I, I love serving in humanitarian organizations, and as possibly some of you may know, mentoring. I love to mentor uh, young engineers, young students. Uh, sometimes I'm listened to, sometimes I'm not listened to, but it's one of my, my biggest passions. My brand is to solve problems by simplifying information among chaos. I drive where chaos is. I'm the guy you wanna collect, you wanna call when all the pieces are broken and I'm gonna do everything I can to put those pieces together and see whether they can make sense. They always never come back to the original shape. However, we do make uh, a difference. Uh, lessons that I have learned. There are six blocks there and each block is very intentional. The first block is that uh, to be curious and willing to learn. I have learned in my few years in this country that if I'm not curious, if I'm not willing to learn, I'll be left behind. Number two, to be intentional in seeking, ment seeking mentors that provide honest feedback. I have learned without mentors, I cannot go far. I have worked for the same company for 19 years as an engineer, and I have taken leadership positions. And, and have proved it's doable from a humble guy all the way from Limuru, right? To come to you in United States and be the head of uh, North America, US and Canada uh, team. It is an accomplishment, but it, it didn't come easy. Be intentional, seeking mentors who can talk to you about, your tr about the, the tr some truth in your life. Number three, I have learned to ask. If I don't ask, I will never know the answer. And number four, I don't need to meet 100% of the requirements to be a great some to, to be great at something. I just need to bring the right attitude and understand what needs to be done. I don't have to beat 100%.
So never wait to be 100% to meet the requirements. Number five, it is okay to let people know that I do not know. Sometimes we shy away from raising our hand saying, I do not know. It is okay. And number six, I have made mistakes and I have learned from those mistakes. Okay, so I, I hope my lessons, uh, one or two of you can grab some of these lessons and apply them in your life, even as you apply, uh, you look for jobs and opportunities in North America. My next slide is uh, the big dream. On the right hand side, and let me get my pointer working here. On the right hand side is the life of a student. I'm assuming I have a mixture of undergraduate and uh, master students and uh, uh, PhD students. At least I had one who is a final year PhD, PhD students. Teachers are all of us, midterms, quizzes, assignments, projects, and it's everything is crashing on us. If this, is, if this describes you today, can you raise your thumb up on the, on the reactions? I was wrong in my assessment. Those must have been my days when I was a student. Oh, I see others now. That is typical, right? Uh, you are crushed from all directions. And, and the ultimate goal is uh, you will come to graduate and then you get your graduation and boom, it was you now who has the power stepping on your diploma and saying, you know what, you, you American corporate, corporate, corporate America, show me the money. I have earned my degree, I wanna come and work, show me the money. And the thinking is, as soon as you graduate, money will start flowing. I hope that happens to you, it didn't happen to me, okay? And why didn't it happen to me? Because life is not a straight line. When life throws a curveball to you, you have to be prepared to figure out what to do with that curveball. I hope people understand when I talk about a curveball. You are going straight and somebody puts an obstacle on your path. These obstacles today could be what? An F1 state, F1, your status, F1 status. COVID-19 comes along. Uh, COVID-19 comes along. Face-to-face -face interviews are canceled. You cannot have face-to-face -face meetings. Oh, the economy is not looking good. All oh, the assistantships are gone. Oh my goodness. Even the even the, the, the stipend that was being paid is gone. Oh, and many, many others start coming along the path. And everything that you dreamt about, everything that you thought about an, as an international student starts crumbling and starts falling apart. And very soon your path is crowded with questions and issues and I hope you see that uh, these images are tears. They are tears, they are tears. What do you do when all the arrays that is surrounding you are tears? I'm an F1 student, oh, I'm from Africa, all this, all that, all that, all my accent. Oh, by the way, this and that, that and that. What do you do? I wanna encourage you by telling you that it's okay to feel overwhelmed. The traditional advice that we used to give students uh, is not applying anymore in this time that we are timeline that we are in today with COVID-19. There are no person, inter, in person interviews, no internships. Internships are fewer and fewer. Networking events are fewer and fewer. Job fairs are fewer and fewer. And uh, the best practices that I gave all the students I have mentored and have gone to career fairs to interview with they are thrown out of the window. So, but what I would like to encourage you is to imagine that these curve balls are going nowhere. Yes, COVID may go. Yes, face-to-face -face may, may come, but there will never be a time when you don't have curve balls in your life and in your career journey. The key is how do I bring success in the midst of all these curve balls in my career? How do I, yes, they will never go away. I can see there is COVID in that corner. F1 is disappearing. Face-to-face -face is disappearing. I can see I have blocked most of those curveballs. And then I'm starting to see success. 
how do you become intentional? Remember the keywords I used. How do you become intentional so that instead of seeing tears and curveballs in your journey, you start seeing success? It starts with you as an international student. It starts with you as an undergraduate student, as a master's student, or even as a PhD student. And my money slide, uh, my boss always tells me, Jesse, you've made a good presentation. What is a money slide? What is my takeaway? Here is my money slides for you. It doesn't matter where you are in your career, undergraduate, a master's, or a PhD. You need to have a goal tree towards your graduation. You need to have a mission. You need to have a vision. You need to have some strategies. And you need to have some initiatives that you can associate with those strategies to give you the end goal. What is the end goal? Get a full employment in the United States or even Canada. If you don't plan accordingly, you are planning to fail. If you sit and wait for things to come, you are planning to fail. So what should be your mission? From the day you are admitted, you, you got to F1, you got an I-20, Focus on identifying your strengths and maximizing them to meet today's job market while in school and after you graduate. So you seek to get a job while you are in school. It may lead to a permanent job. It may not lead to a permanent job. What is your vision? You should leverage your full capability and network to create personal brand. If you remember in my earlier slide, I have a personal brand that, I, that, 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 I, that, that, that belongs to me, right? That defines me. What defines you as an international student? Is it that you are from Kenya? Is that your brand? Is it that you are an F1 student? Is that your brand? What is your brand as an, as an international student? You should be able, I interview students. Uh, I used to go to colleges, Virginia Tech and North Carolina a and to interview students. And if you passed the, the, if you are ranked between one and three, when we collect all these 50 resumes, and eventually we end up with eight because all the others could not even face to face. I always ask students, when I'm talking to you, I'm looking for you to convince me that I will make the worst mistake if I do not hire you for the position I'm, I, am, I am recruiting. So it is your job, it is your duty to ensure that you convince that recruiter you are the best student, you are the best candidate for that position. That doesn't come easily. It comes with some strategies. Come some strategies. Understand the rules and regulations for, for converting an F1 to H1B visa. Understand that. Get to understand the rules and regulations. Maintain your student visa status. And be honest with your interviews, interviewers regarding your status. That's one thing I found some students. We will go a long way without them telling me they're international students. I have, of course, I have known already, but most of them will not say for fear of being uh, denied an opportunity. Be honest. Number two, know the job market. In your head, you must always wake up realizing, dreaming working in corporate America or starting your own business or whatever, but you can't start one unless you have your visa issues are resolved. So know the job market, begin to look for work and internship early enough in your career. Don't wait until you are a third year student. C can you hear me? Yes, Good. yes we can. I lost something and I, I didn't know whether I, I was talking to myself. So. Seek out employers who have a history of, of employing international talents. Uh, don't go to Walmart. They don't hire international students as often. Go to Caterpillar. My friend, I hope you, I hope you clapped for me for, for lifting up your company here. He knows himself. <laughs> yes, certainly. certainly. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if Caterpillar, Caterpillar doesn't listen to you, uh, make sure you first come to Cummins and we will hire you. We hire international students because they hired me, right? Look for opportunities where you can find them. Don't waste your time and your resources with the companies that you have no clue whether they hire uh, F1 students or not. Understand 
what are the current trends in your field, right? What are the trends? Is it a booming, is it a booming area or is, am I struggling? Are you studying uh, marine biology uh, at a time when marine biology is uh, such a big issue? Or are you studying uh, uh, supply chain, which is a big thing today, right? Or are you, have you fallen into this idea of follow your heart, follow your desires, which will lead you to nowhere? So think carefully as you weigh your options of the job market. Learn the buzzwords in your industry. Be a frequent visitor to your college career service office, and then have a professional resume. I cannot tell you how many times I have turned kids away in a, in a, in a, in a career fair. Brilliant kids, and I have told some of them, especially from Africa, take your resume, go back to your desk, fix it and bring it back to me. Because I've talked to the person, I see the potential, but they, I'm not the only one who's gonna interview you. And if the other people see your resume, believe me, it's gonna be ranked at three into the trash can. It has happened to me many times. Number, uh, strategy number four, develop and manage your network. Develop and manage your network. Attend career fairs. Be prepared. Research each company you intend to interview with. Don't come to my booth. Uh, we, we make engines and you ask me, what do you do? What am I supposed to tell you? Who is asking who questions, right? And, and I'm telling you, having done this for 19 years, uh, I don't share away telling somebody, go back when you figure out what we do, you come back, we will talk, okay? Contact your college alumni, friends, family, list your profile in networking sites like LinkedIn and many others that are there. Talk to people, you are not alone. Attend events relevant to your subject area, right? Seek them out. Uh, in, my, in, my, in my doctoral program, I went to SAE conferences. I went to materials engineering con conferences. Uh, yes, I knew I'm a student, an F1 student, and chances are people don't want to hear about you looking for a job, but I went anyway. And from one of those conferences, I made some pretty good network. And, and the last bullet under this strategy here for, for your network, utilize case ne uh, network. Mentors are available. You make the first move. Again, I say you make the first move. Our contacts are available. There is um, uh, one of the professors, our mentors, they reached out to me to reach out to a mechanical engineering student, I think in Louisiana, and they gave me their number. I have called that student twice, no response. You all think I'm going to call them the third time? Absolutely not. I will not call them the third time. Number four, strategy number four, internship. You need to seek your internships as early as possible, from your freshman year to the day you graduate. And by the way, internships become more difficult as you go to your master's level and to your doctoral level. It's very difficult to get interns as a master's level student and even worse as a doctoral level student. It becomes worse. Your optimal time for internships are when you are doing your undergraduate and you need to start when you are freshman, nobody's gonna hire you, but you start building experiences of marketing yourself, of selling yourself. Every freshman who comes to my to Cummins booth when I'm there and they have good potential, I take them aside and I tell them, look, you don't even have, you don't even have a GPA on your resume because this is your first semester, it's a full semester. Look here. I need to see you in spring and next year fall. And I will look for A, B, C, D. And I need you to come. And if I'm on this booth, call me and we will talk. You start learning. Remember one of the things that I've learned in life? You have to learn. And learning is not in the four walls of your classroom. You have to learn by involving yourself in activities that are building you and building your career and building your network. Let's say you learned that internship, that's number four. 
this, this uh, block down here, strategy number four. Bring the three E's, be enthusiastic, bring energy, bring excitement. Let me tell you a quick story of an African student who got hired at Cummins and uh, three summers ago, and I didn't hire that student, neither was he in my group, but he was from Africa. And uh, uh, a month and a half into his program, somebody reached out to me, hey, we need your help. I said, with what? We need you to talk to so-and-so. Uh, can you attend a presentation that he's making and figure out uh, how to help him? So I was a fly on the wall. I present, I, I present, I sat down in his presentation and I was like, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. So after the presentation, I arranged a meeting with him. Uh, we had a one-on-one -on -one. and I realized uh, the person was not motivated. He had no energy. He was not excited about what he was doing. I promised to help him. And I asked him to set up meetings with me. He did not. I set up meeting, I set up the meeting myself. He came for the first meeting. He missed the second meeting. Well, the manager reached out to me and he told me, guess what? The guy didn't show up for work the last two days. I said, what do you mean he didn't show up for work? Well, we don't know where he is. Well, I called the guy and he said he was tired. This is a guy from Africa. What do you think I felt, my fellow learned friends? Needless to say, he did not complete his internship. He was let go. That's example number one. Example number two, twice I have caught interns sleeping at their desk, dozing off at their desk, dozing off. And I have to shake somebody and wake them up. Please bring energy, bring excitement. Get meaningful work. Document your contributions and your key deliverables. Don't go to an interview and start talking about what you all did. We did, we did, we did. I could care less. I want to hear what was your contribution? What was your deliverable? What did you deliver? I don't care how big it was or how small it was, but I want to see what did you do as an individual? Right? What talent did you bring? What did you, what logic did you use to solve problems? So always seek out a value add project versus non-value add assignment. And in the middle, should you find that I'm getting non-value added assignments, speak up. People like people who will speak up. This is, this is America. And sometimes we are we are gauged by how how often we talk, right? And I'm the guy who keep, remember I'm an inter, I, INCJ, an introvert. I don't speak often. And it hurt me my early days in my career, right? So speak up, speak up, people will listen. Be vulnerable. It's okay to be transparent with your colleagues and how they put you. Ask for help. Remember my first slide, I have learned to ask for help. It's also okay to be able to be. Nobody expects you to know 100%. All I'm asking you is, can you bring can-do attitude? And can you deliver on small tasks? Because those small tasks lead to complex assignments. And if you do these strategies, one, two, three, and four, and if you really focus on your mission, your vision and strategies and these initiatives, Chances are, if you land yourself an internship, it will lead to a full-time job. If God opens a door for you as a, as a sophomore in your sophomore year and you open, you have an internship, more likely than not, it could lead to a full-time position or even a third internship. I have seen that happen within Cummings. However, three E's, you sleep on your desk, you get, you're not excited, you are tired, and companies paying you, you will be in trouble. Now, how about if you don't get an internship? Because getting an internship also as an, as an F1 student is a challenge. This is where you become creative. Look for meaningful, uh, uh, what do you call them? Uh, volunteer opportunities. Don't just volunteer without documenting what you are doing. Always look for value add. 
what can you tell me when you volunteered at the mission house or at the food pantry? What did you do? How many guests did you serve? What were they coming there for? Always try to quantify what you did. That is what uh, employers are looking for. Don't come with generic, oh, I, I served at the homeless shelter. So what? What did you do there? What value did you add there? Okay, so uh, that is what I had uh, for today. Uh, I'm assuming 20 minutes are not over yet. Are they over? We're enjoying the presentation, Dr. Machai, so we forgot, we lost track of time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, so I'll leave this slide there for a few minutes uh, to see if there are any questions before I share my last slide. And uh, I know Dr. Wanyama is here, uh, my fellow engineer, uh, works for my, my, my other, you know, the company that I don't like very much, uh, but we are friends in expertise. Okay, and many others, I'm sure possibly some other mentors have joined in the course of my presentation. So any questions that have been asked online? I don't see any questions online, not unless our individual people have questions. Okay. This is great comments. They're enjoying the, the presentation, great points, so yeah. All right, good, good. So, so let, me, let, me, let me talk a little bit about being intentional. It doesn't matter which field you are in. Some people think that uh, it's, it's in the medical field and so I'm, I'm gonna get a job. Let me tell you, nothing is guaranteed. You have to work. Looking for a job by itself is work. I have, I have, I have my son here who's been looking, you know, he's been working and he wants to quit his job because he doesn't like it. And I told him I never grew in that era where I quit a job because I don't like it and I don't have another job, right? So looking for a job is work. Let me address one more, one more thing here. And I know it wasn't part of the conversation that I was asked to talk about. And I'm saying here, uh, graduate school or job market? That's a question many people ask. Do I go to grad school or do I look for a job? If I can tell you my, my journey, when I started my undergrad at Auburn University, I graduated, I, I got admitted, I graduated in December and got admitted at Virginia Tech in January. Remember, I got the call from the professor who gave me funding on Christmas Day. And that was the best Christmas because, you know, if you don't get admission to a, to a, to a, to a, a grad school or an unemployment, your F1 is at risk. So she called me and said, Jesse, I'll hire you for your master's. You'll be getting $1,100 a month. I didn't want to hear anything more else. I packed my U-Haul truck and drove from Alabama to Virginia Tech. And after that, for my doctoral program, I got an admission at Ladgas in North Carolina ENT. Ladgas gave me less money. North Carolina gave me more money. It was no brainer. It, I was gonna do engineering both either way. Uh -huh. To North Carolina, that's where they gave me money, and that's where I graduated from and eventually got hired here. But the question is, I started in North America in U.S. Uh, as a student, as a, as an undergraduate student, did my masters and eventually did my doctorate, right? Uh. Is Picture is clear, and I hope you remember this. Job availability. If you're an undergraduate, there are a lot of opportunities for you, right? Even an, as an F1 student, if you play your cards right, there are many, many opportunities here to bring you here as a winner. If you are a master's, there are fewer opportunities for you, right? People who are hiring master's level students, F1 students, are fewer. If you are pursuing a doctorate, there are even fewer, right? There are even fewer. So you really have to, uh, and by the way, there, there, there is a qualifier here, right? This is based on Dr. Muchai's experience, depending on, on career choice, right? This is based on my experience uh, during recruiting, my experience at Cummins, now the only company I've worked for in North America. Uh, this funnel, this funnel here has been very, very true. There are many candidates I have interviewed that are doctoral students, and, and I feel for them because 
even when I, I went, I, uh, by the time I go to these career fairs, I've been told by my, my company, we are not hiring doctoral students. Very few master students, please target undergraduates. So have that in mind. And then I wanna show you another thing, expected salary. Uh, if you look at this graph that I've plotted here, educational level starting from undergraduate, masters and PhD, th th there is possibly, and I'm not saying that's who, what people in this forum are thinking about, that if I have an undergraduate, I have less money, if I have a PhD, I have the most money. Let me tell you, this is the true reality. Getting a doctorate does not equal to getting a higher salary. It's not a linear relationship. It's not a linear relationship. There is no correlation in most fields. Okay. There is some correlation in some fields. As you advance your degree, you are guaranteed you'll make more money. But don't be fooled by thinking that I'm just going to go and do a doctorate and I'm going to get me, you know, make more money. So uh, that one is out there. It's a whole topic by itself. And I said here, there is a topic for another day by another speaker. But I just thought, for those who are graduating in December, graduating in May, uh, have this in mind even as you, you go through your, uh, your decisions as to what next in your career. Uh, with that, I open it to Q&A and uh, that's all I had for the team. Thank you very much for being an attentive audience. Gilbert, are you there? Thank you so yes. much, Dr. Michai. That was an amazing presentation. Uh, Gilbert, are you there? Or Kevin? Or I like the students to do their thing. <laughs> I'm here. I saw a question uh, here. Someone asked about uh, about the associate's degree, where they are placed, and their chances on the market as an F1. You can go ahead and ask that question so that way it's more. Kevin, you want to ask, ask the question? Yeah, sure. So, yeah, my question was just in general, like, or rather, at least I think to the um, doctor or pretty much anybody, right? So, like, the experience, how with the associate degrees holders, like, where do they get placed? Do they get placed, like, in uh, getting internships? Uh, probably how long do they stay? Maybe, you know, such things. and. Uh, in general, like what's the advice, right? Mm, like where to search maybe, like is there a demand for them maybe? Yeah, so that's the question. Dr. Wanyama, do you want to take that? Oh, okay. I thought it was for Dr. Mushai. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm the one who threw it to you. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, uh, yeah, my name is uh, Wanyama. Uh, I'm also an engineer, as Mushai mentioned. Actually, mechanical engineer, we are basically mirror images. He, he says he doesn't like our company, but uh, he needs to tell us why. But <laughs> so uh, associate degree actually is, uh, is a good degree, uh, especially in the technical area. And uh, what I've seen uh, most students do is uh, you do your associate degree and uh, there, is, there are opportunities for internship, but most, most students actually do that so that they can, uh, because of uh, tuition and all that, especially for international students, the associate degree is uh, a little bit cheaper. So you go in there, you do your two years, I believe, in most cases, you get your associate degree. You could go for internship, or alternatively, you could just bridge a gap, apply for a, for a degree course, and typically they will transfer all your courses to the degree to the towards your degree, and uh, you spend another two years. So, depending on how you want to do it, if you get an internship early in the game, I would rather you go for that. As Dr. Mushai said, internship is the key to getting a job. Uh, I think for the most part in the 
in the US market. Very, very important. I'm gonna add something to what Dr. Wanyama said that is, that is very okay. important. So it is, if you can go to a community college, of course it is highly recommended because for one, it gives you time to figure out really what you want to major in. It is also cheaper, saves you a lot of money. And most institutions, I can only speak for North Carolina, we have something that is called an articulation agreement. So what that happens is all the grad, all, all uh, so, so the community colleges with the four-year university sign an articulation agreement because the money is coming from the same pocket anyway. So after you finish your associate degree, then you can transfer to a four-year college and all your credit hours will transfer. So you just start as a junior. And the beauty with that is your grades transfer. I mean, your courses transfer, your grades does not transfer. Let me explain that. Any grade that you have a C and above, it transfers. So you pretty much start as a 4.0 student. So your grades, any grade that you have, uh, as long as it's a C and above, it transfers up to 60 credit hours, depends on the community, on the institution. But when you start your junior year, you start a new slate. So you start as a, as a 4.0 student. So it actually gives you an opportunity to build your GPA. If you messed up, if you goofed up a little bit during your freshman or your sophomore, so you have an opportunity to graduate, to start up fresh with a 4.0 GPA. Because the only thing that I need to put the caveat there is that when you're graduating during graduation, you don't graduate as an honor student, but they, they put those students who transfer. So there's a category for students who transfer, but it's still a great way to save money, figure out what you really wanna do, and then get a good GPA and you move on to, as you move on to the next level. So if you can take advantage of that, I tell students, do it, go for it, save money. As a matter of fact, uh, I did attend a junior college myself at Alabama. Uh, I didn't know what a junior college was, but one Muzungu kid who I helped in thermodynamics uh, showed me the way. And I did all those history and American whatever in a junior college. So they, 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 they can be very helpful. And like Professor said, less money. All right, there's somebody who talked about uh, big data, right? So uh, let, let's talk a little bit about alternate, alternative careers, right? And, and I'm sure this generation, unlike our, our generation who came here with the mindset of I'm gonna be an engineer or a, or a lawyer or, a, or you know, we, we, our mind was framed by our parents what the core careers were. You people need to, di to diversify look at those buzzwords and seek out those careers. Big data is one of them that really, and I think somebody here seems to have a very good contact on big data. Uh, explore, think outside the box, right? Think about the box, about those other careers out there that are upcoming that I don't even know about. You can only know that in a forum like this, look, look out for Dr. Manyara from Radgas. Talk to them, send them an email. Okay. So, so I see that there's someone looking for a mentor. Please go ahead and email me and let me know what kind, what area you are in. Email any of us. You can email Dr. Machai, Dr. Wanyama or myself and let us know what, what area you're looking for. We'll help, we'll connect you to a mentor. I see that is Veronica. Is it Veronica or, yeah, Madania, okay. Yeah, Veronica. Any other questions, students? You have an opportunity. Any other students or comments? Any other questions, sorry? So the key thing is internship like that, it would, like you said, Dr. Machaya, I cannot emphasize, you know, when you do your internship, it's like being on a three month interview. You know, do a great job. And you know, I was actually looking at my daughter, she's gonna get mad for me for sharing that she's doing, she did an internship in the summer for Dell. Then they continue, she's actually doing the internship. And every week they send us some candy, some gifts. I'm like, what is this people? I don't get any gifts for my job. 
but they keep sending us stuff. I'm like, I'm jealous today. They send a big box of gifts. I'm like, this is crazy. <laughs> so they will take care of you if they, you know, they will really make sure that they're keeping you. So that I'm looking at it. I'm like, I've never got a gift from my job. I work so hard, but you get gifts every week. <laughs> I said, I might have to switch and we'll start looking for Dell so I can get gifts every week. Seriously, the biggest challenge we have in international students sometimes, uh, those that I've, I've interviewed, is they believe that uh, it, it's difficult, it's, it's, it's challenging to get, and it is, but you have to start with it can be done. And when you get that opportunity, please shine. Right? Everything you do while you are working for that company for those three months, it's being observed by somebody. In your first, very first few weeks, some people already have made up their mind on don't convert that one or convert that one. When you, why did I make the presentation I made to you today? Right? Right from your presentations to your way you carry yourself, it makes a difference. And it gives me as a hiring manager an opportunity to see the potential that I'm about to hire. Okay? Getting muted. And maybe this is, uh, Dr. any of the mentors can answer that in case of, uh, where employees are looking for experienced candidates, how can one get experience? How can one with no experience make it to the job market? That's why we're emphasizing on internships, internships, volunteer, volunteer, study. Don't wait until your senior year. So start volunteering, do things with the community, internship, internship, internship. I'm gonna let Dr. Machaya, Dr. Wanyama uh, talk about other ways you can do that. Well, in terms of experience, actually, like in my case, when I came to the US, I came for the grad school. So I noticed that uh, you see when you study at home, that is Kenya, you come here and then it's like you never went to school. Essentially, that is what it was. So once I figured that out, I noticed that uh, for the undergrads, people are going to do internship and all that. And as Dr. Mushai mentioned, the more you progress, that is in terms of masters and then the PhD, opportunities actually tend to diminish. And especially in our field, you know, the engineering and technology area, they prefer students who have gone through the undergrad and especially here in the US. It's very difficult to be hired directly from, say, Kenya with an undergraduate degree. So the thing here was I had to talk for myself. I told them that I did work. Of course, I worked in Kenya for eight years before I came actually to grad school. And I emphasized that I did a lot of work in Kenya. I was a design engineer, which is true. I did A, B, C, D. And I was asked a lot of questions, but at the same time, you have to be in close contact with people who have gone to, uh, who, who have done internships. Uh, some of those uh, professors, I was doing some kind of a design, uh, the design class uh, that was mechanical and uh, electrical combined. So I was involved in a lot of student projects. So I knew I was in touch with a, a number of students doing all kinds of projects. So I was at par with what was happening actually in the field. So that when you go for an interview, you don't lie, just say that I've not done the internship, but I know A, B, C, and D. You know, in terms of the students who you have interacted with, the projects you have run with the students. So that also actually adds some value if you did not get an opportunity to do your internship. That was my approach. But no. the, the best thing to do is look for a way to get that internship. No matter how long it takes, 
Yeah, it may take a while to get employed, but look for that opportunity. Thank you. Yes. I can also add that as international students, you may not have a lot of opportunities out there, but take advantage of what you have on your campus. Work with your professors. You know, all of you, they have different organizations within your campuses that do those things. There's a lot of, so take advantage of those resources on campus, volunteer, uh, talk to your professors. And a lot of those internships, I saw a question is, where do I find an internship? I am a department chair. We have all that information. We actually have a blackboard shelf for our students where we list all possible agencies. On your campus also, you have a department, you have an office of career, career affairs, career. So they have career affairs every, you know, okay, you know, most of the time they should have them very frequently. If they don't attend those career affairs and go to their office and sit and explain to them. And then when you look for a job, if you don't have a lot of experience, if you don't have the internship, include that information on in your cover letter. Explain to them that as an international student, you have taken advantage of all the opportunities that have been available on the campus. You've worked in your department, you've worked in your dean's office, you've worked in the library, whatever. Just explain that and say, because of the limited, because of my visa status, I was not able to work off campus but I took advantage of every opportunity that, was able, that I was able to get on campus. So yes, take advantage of those, work with your professors and all those internships, key thing, key thing, stay close to your advisor. Advisor, your professors, they will give you everything. And then most of us get information, like we get emails, say, hey, we were looking for an intern for this. I do that intentionally. Every week I post internship opportunities for our students. We share any information on our Blackboard, go to your professors, go to your professors, go to your international office, all those things are on campus. Some of us just don't spend enough time on campus. You wanna come in, take your classes and go outside and do other things, but that is not gonna help you. Stay connected with the people that you have on campus. And, and let me emphasize again on whatever you are doing, Quantify what you did, not what we did. What was your personal contribution? If you were working in the library, what department? What was your, quantify what you did, not we did, right? And uh, convert every opportunity to a selling point. That's, that's my theory. Right, I'll convert every opportunity to a selling point. Uh, let, let me give you an example. Last year we did the KCID, KCID uh, we raised funds for the KCID, right? KCID, KCID group, right? You would think that was just a volunteer. But in one of our staff meetings, I gave some numbers, right? I gave some numbers and I said, you know what? We have these many students affected by ABCD. There are so many from here, so many from, I gave numbers and I said, this is what we are looking to do. And this is my role to raise $12,000. At the end of that meeting, my executive director would us a check of $500. Gave it to me and that went to the kitty of the money that we gave. Why? I had the least opportunity. I had like three minutes, but I maximized that opportunity because I had facts and my fingertips. Now sell yourself the same way. Something that you thought was just a by the way, if you're an engineer and your school has mini bar or SAE activities, volunteer and go to SAE conferences. Be one of those guys who are designing the mini bar car, right? And go to competitions. I go to competitions, mini bar competitions, and students think I'm coming there just to look, to look at it. No, I'm also coming to see the students who are participating and their involvement. I don't care whether you are F1 or not, I know Cummings will hire you if I recommend and if you do a good job. Dr. Mutai. You know, we have this thing where you look at some information, some resumes, and you put DNA. What does DNA mean? 
No DNH? Okay. <laughs> no, no. So uh, I, I give an example. <laughs> like last career fair I went, uh, we were five, we were four of us. So the whole day is, you know, eight, nine to nine to nine to three o'clock is career fair. And we have all these resumes. There were about 120 resumes. But at every every interview, I work with the students. Um, I don't want to say what I, I don't want to say exactly what happens, but let me just put it this way. When you leave the that when you leave my booth, your resume goes into a certain pile. One, two, or three, or A, B, or C, or whatever that was. Your resume immediately goes on that based on your resume and the few five minutes that the five minutes that I talked with you. At the end of the day, out of the 120, we had 14 resumes of which we called people to come for a face-to-face. -face. All the others never saw the light of day. I hope that sinks. I really hope that sinks. And it pains me to see a student I thought was great, but my colleague never met that student and they are seeing the resume and they're like, I, I can't even go past, past here, right? I can't. And if it's, if, if it's written whatever we write there, I don't want to say whatever we write on them. It's never go past that. So that's all I can say about that. <laughs> we have a term that we used to, I don't want to say it here because the people who are like, <laughs> like we said, and we're reviewing all this right now on a search committee, we put them on this folder. We're like, no, nope, one, two, three. Actually, we have one, two. We don't look at two again. That's it. Like we're done with them. Let them go. <laughs> so you don't want to be there. You know, one of the other things that maybe that's for another, for another day is community soft skills, how you talk. You know, the way you talk, like Dr. Muchai says, you go to a company and you say, what do you do? That is number one, a turn off. What do you do? You should make sure. So the way you talk, the way you engage with the interview, we call the soft skills communication. That can also be a big turn off if you're not careful how you speak or how you present yourself. You could have a great resume, but the way you present yourself, that's it, you're done. You're gonna be throwing in that pile. We're gonna be throwing in that pile number two, and you'll never see the light of the day again. Somebody asked a question there. Uh, they comment that Lydia says you're in IT field. You can also get entry jobs by mm -hmm. getting certification. I like that. That is really key. If you have any certifications in your field, remember again, we're international students. We don't have a lot of opportunities. Take, like I said, take advantage of everything that you have. Take some certifications, do something, make sure you have, I call it a mobile resume. So build your resume, even when you're at a current job, you should, you should be able to move anytime. So take advantage, get some certifications, get some experiences, do some leadership. You really wanna stand out. And I'll tell you from my experience, when I finished my under, when I finished my PhD, I was looking for a job. I walked into this job, this, this, this university, and actually that is what hired, they hired me on the spot. So I walked on there, there was no position advertised at all. But what I had done on top of my PhD was I had two certifications that were very key in the field. So as soon as I walked in the chair's office, I said, hey, I'm looking for a job, I just graduated, and this is my resume. She looked at it and she said, hmm, I like this. She said, I don't have any position right now, but if anything comes up, I'll call you. Two days later, she called me. She said, the person who was teaching that certification course, and it was not something huge. It was actually first aid, CPR, <laughs> and with American Red Cross. You know, there are some courses that you have to have your certification. So I did my certification with American Red Cross, first aid, CPR, and AED. I was an instructor. They needed somebody with that background. That certification is what got me into the door. So right there, I stood out, all the other resumes were put under the bucket and now mine was put on top because I had something extra. So if you get an opportunity, take any certifications in your field. Again, like I said, pile it up. We are not gonna be at a prior, we're not gonna be on top of any interview, but you wanna look so good that you can't give them any opportunity to, to let you know, to let you go. So build it up. 
volunteer, leadership, take some step up and do some leadership, take some certifications, do some, you know, whatever, international trips, study abroad, whatever you can do to make your resume look rich. I like the network being built here right now. It's very good. We're just going through the questions. Um, Dr. Machai, Dr. Wanyama, if you see anything. I see also Dr. Shuri is there. Dr. Shuri, you want to say something? Dr. Shuri is an accountant and is, he does a lot of great things. Dr. Shuri, we see you in the room. You want to say something? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Dr. Gerono. Uh, that was an amazing presentation uh, from Dr. Machai and uh, all the input from uh, Dr. Wanyama, Engineer Wanyama, and, uh, and others. I, I think you, you covered it very, very well. Uh, this is very, very uh, great presentation about, uh, 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 you know, supporting our students who are here in the U.S. And as you all know, we are all here for all of you, uh, students. Uh, we are the, the mentors that uh, uh, Dr. Muchai was talking about, people who you can reach out to. Uh, and there are many who are uh, within our One, One Voice Consortium in which uh, Cassid and Dr. Gerono plays a big, big role in. So we are there as a family to support you in any way. Uh, so reach out, uh, as Dr. Muchai said, reach out uh, uh, to others. Uh, uh, post where you need help and uh, we'll definitely try to link you with uh, uh, you know, an organization or, or a person somewhere who can be able to help you because uh, in, in this journey, especially when you're in far, far countries, you, you look at others who are there before you to see how, how they can be able to help you. So uh, uh, reach out to all of us and, uh, you know, we'll surely be able to help you. And as they have said, uh, you know, uh, try very much to uh, look for opportunities because sometimes um, opportunities are in areas where you least expect them. You know, uh, so go, go out, uh, uh, look for uh, connections here and there, uh, read widely, uh, uh, you know, search for things in the internet, uh, uh, you know, and, and all opportunities are there. Because a lot of these things that you think, uh, you know, uh, are not possible, they're possible. You can be out there and you find there's a scholarship for this or there's an internship for that and, and, and so forth. Because as you know, a lot of organizations have gone digital. So visit their websites uh, under their, you know, various uh, uh, sections, maybe under sections of resources or connections or uh, whatever else that they have in their, in their websites. And you'll be amazed that uh, you might find the information that you're looking for. So, uh, you know, information is out there and uh, make use of it and, uh, you know, uh, uh, reach out. That's all I can say. Uh, you know, but again, you know, uh, I know our Kenyan students are very innovative and very adaptive. So, uh, you know, I, I know they will be able to really uh, uh, progress on well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you so much. Uh, I see a comment by Veronica. Veronica, are you here? Uh, she's trying to change coming from social work background, but in like, trying to find a different pathway. Uh, Veronica, all I can say is really follow your heart. Sometimes it's not the best to do something just because of the money, because you can do something, it pays very well, but you're going to be very miserable. So I always tell students, do something that you enjoy. You know, follow your heart, whatever you like, whatever career you're really interested in. Follow your heart, and there's always going to be a way out. So if you have any questions, feel free to email me. I can connect you to some people in the background. But you know, just don't do something because everybody's doing that. But you can also, if you, if you enjoy doing what you're doing, in my field, in my life, I say the good Lord will open a door for you. OK. Okay, we are almost winding up. Uh, anyone else with a concern or a question? Hey, I don't have a question, but um, I want to comment on something. Sure. 
So thank you all for all those good comments. It's been amazing. One thing I'll advise uh, other international students, take advantage of, uh, I know everybody has been saying, you can volunteer, you can do internships. Take, a, take advantage of what is called CPT. So don't wait until you're, you know, after you graduate, then you apply for OPT. Actually, you can, you can start working off campus if you have your CPT. So you go to your DSO, get uh, what Dr. Cherona said, advisors, talk to them, you have academic advisors, take that one class that's related to what you are, you're doing. And then you can get a credit for it. Because during the summer, you can be allowed actually to work up to 40 hours full time. And even during the holidays, during December. So if you have CPT, you take advantage of that and let them give you permit authority to work off campus. And that's how actually you accumulate and then record what you do during those times. And that will help you when you go for internship or when you get your OPT. Thank you. Thank you, um, Eric, that was great. Let me tell you something about professors. We get so busy and we love great students. If you came to my office and you want to do some more, I will grab you, I will take care of you. I'll do whatever it takes to keep you. So we appreciate students who want to do the work. The problem is they don't show up. They only come when they have a problem. They only come when they have a problem, when they have a bad grade, when they have this, but they don't come and say, hey, is there anything I can do to help? I will, you know, I will give you work, I will, whatever, if there is money that is there, I'll give you a recommendation, I will do whatever it takes to support. So we really love students who want to do something. I have never had of any professor turning a student away to say, oh, I'm busy, that, because you want to help. Just take the courage, go to that office, sit there and say, hey, is there anything I can do? I really like what you're doing, how can I help you? Uh, do you see any other questions? Um, and uh, Dr. Shuri, you didn't tell us you are in a, you are an accountant and you do just so that if the students need to reach out to you, share your field of expertise. Did you leave? Yeah, <coughs> thank you, thank you, uh, uh, Chirono, uh, uh, Prof. Chirono. Uh, my my area of expertise is in global management and global management and enterprise development. Um, I am a food safety auditor, so I, I audit uh, uh, companies that are in food production, right from uh, uh, growing, harvesting, uh, 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 packaging, processing of food and, and so forth. Um, uh, so uh, uh, students who would want to excel in areas of uh, uh, business uh, uh, management, uh, uh, global uh, supply chain management, uh, uh, you know, I, I can be able to support in that area. And especially uh, uh, students that want to uh, improve in terms of uh, professional development in areas of uh, uh, quality management, that's an area that, uh, you know, my, my company does a lot of certifications for people who want to be, uh, you know, registered. Uh, to be certified in those uh, particular quality management systems. So again, uh, uh, Rachel, those are the areas that I'm in. Uh, I manage uh, an organization called Global Standards uh, uh, Resource Institute, and we do a lot of uh, quality management systems audits. Uh, I'm sure some of you are familiar with when I say International Standards Organization, ISO. Uh, we have very, very many ISO certifications. Uh, including those for uh, quality management systems, uh, food safety management systems, and other, uh, you know, uh, uh, management systems around uh, uh, organizations, or, uh, around health, around safety, around environment, uh, and so forth. So there are many schemes that we do. So again, uh, you know, uh, uh, I know today was uh, Dr. Muchai's presentation, but again, if uh, in future, uh, uh, Professor Gerono puts together another session uh, uh, on issues of uh, supporting you in areas of uh, professional development, I'll be able to come in and give uh, some more information. Uh, you can also visit, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, my organization at uh, www.globalsusa.com for more information.
Great, great. Dr. Shuri will be the next presenter. Dr. Shuri is also the president of the One Voice, One Consortium. So we have great resources here. I think because of, I know time is almost up, because we're really interested in networking, if you can just go around the room and just say your name and what area you're in, and those who are here, if you see somebody that you're in the same area, then you can stay connected. So real quick, students, just say your name, your area, or state, and then what you're studying so that somebody can, maybe somebody can, write, can reach out to you to, to get some quick information. Kevin will just go for, oh, oh Gilbert, we are right at the top. <laughs> okay. I'll I'll go first. Uh, I'm Makomere Gilbert. Uh, I'm doing my master's in human development and family science with applied human services co uh, concentration. I'm finishing my master's um, in a month's time to come. What's the plan? OPT. Okay, where? Uh, have you applied? Yeah, I've applied for one. Uh, okay. I'm waiting for the second interview. Oh, good. What university? Remember, it's for networking purpose. What university? Oh, oh, Oklahoma State University. Okay, good. Okay, good. All right. Kevin, I'm just going by what I see on my screen. Kevin? Yeah, hello, I'm Kevin Kangede. I'm studying Associates of Applied Science in Networking and System Administration, basically information technology. I'm in uh, Burn Community College and in New Jersey. Yeah. Sorry, I think Professor you're muted. Okay, James. <laughs> okay, James. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Dr. James Roti at the University of Oregon. Uh, and uh, I've been uh, an active participant of the group for a while now. And I'm in HTFS, Human Development and Family Services. Uh, the, my focus is prevention science and aging. So if you would like to talk about social sciences, I saw someone talking about that, please contact me and we can talk more about that. Thank you so much. University of Oregon. That is Dr. Gilbert's mentor. See how we connected? That is a professor. <laughs> you look so young today. <laughs> you look like a student. So that is one of our mentors. Yes, Dr. Yeah, he's, he's, been very, he's been really working very great with uh, him. So, yep, get in touch with him. We have his contact if you need to reach him. Sam? Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Kiroko. I'm doing my MB at Assumption in Massachusetts, and I will be done in May. So I'm planning to, I'm applying for both CPT and OPT, but I haven't gotten any feedback. So but my plan B will be maybe doing another, I, I want to major more in uh, business analytics, so I might do another master's in business analytics as I, see whether I'll get an opportunity for a job. But in the meantime, I've done some certifications in Google Analytics, another program Google launched. So as I continue to make myself more marketable in the field. Great, great. Most of us will tell you, go for your PhD. Yeah, so I was, yeah. I was weighing between PhD or master's, but like since, so I was debating if I do PhD, will I be have less chance to get employment or can I wait for another master's and like still have a chance to go to get employment? So I'm still debating. Let me tell you something, you know, for those of us, like you said, it's not a degree you can make, you can be a PhD, but business people, you get paid a lot of money. So yeah. I would consider going for your PhD, you, you know, and you look at the professors, the people who get paid the most, the engineers, MBA, nursing, because they pay you comparable to what you'd get in the job market. So I would really think about it. And if you need to reach out, we can connect you to some professors who can uh, who are in that area. Yeah, I would appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, Yatini, thank you so much. I'm trying to make it quick so we can go to bed. Yatini, yes. Hi everyone, my name is Yatina Katunga. Yes. I am a master's in information technology graduate from Webster University in Missouri. I have already graduated and I am currently 
going through the market, I'm looking for a role in business intelligence analysis, a business analyst. Um, but because information technology management is very broad, I am open to opportunities that I come across. Great. All the best. Great. Uh, Ruth, would that say? Yes. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Ruth Ndave. I'm a graduate here at Louisiana State University. Uh, in my final semester, uh, doing a PhD in biochemistry. So I'm seeking opportunities for a postdoc or uh, instructor positions at the moment. And I've also applied for my OPT. Great, 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 great. Send me an email. I may connect you to somebody. Yeah. I've, I just sent one to you. Okay, good. Okay, good. Yeah, because yes, because um, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Great. So make sure you're taking numbers and names for those. Yes, let me see. James, uh, Joel. Yeah, Joseph, Joel. Yes, yes. <laughs> 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 yes, um, thank you so much, Prof, and thank you, um, Dr. Mushai, for that wonderful presentation. You really just caught my heart when you talked about quantification of volunteer activities. I uh, will look for you on that, uh, <laughs> just aside, uh, because I've been doing some volunteer activities in school, and I just I didn't know how to quantify that. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm a PhD student in chemistry at the University of Arkansas, Fayetteville. And um, I'm into nanomaterials for semiconductors and photocatalysis. Um, um, I, I've been connected to a mentor that is, Dr. Joseph Magat, we are doing a great, great stuff with him, but I'm open to more and more connections. Kesid is home. Yes. Kesa is home. Great, great, great. Thank you. <laughs> great, yeah, you can't go wrong. This is home, this is where you belong. You wanna stay outside? <laughs> All right, let's keep moving. Uh, let's see, Keegan. Hey, my name is Eric Keegan. Um, I'm a PhD candidate here at Middle Tennessee State in uh, close to Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, I study exercise physiology. Um, you know, hopefully um, I'll be done by actually May. Uh, I'm looking to defend by March. So, and then look for the jobs. I'm in a job search. I've, I've interviewed a couple of jobs here and there, so good leads. And also, you know, Dr. Chirono there. <laughs> so uh, hoping posi other positions will open and I'm just looking at different opportunities. And if you have any question as far as exercise science, exercise physiology is done, reach out. And also I want to encourage all students, please. We had a good time uh, during the KESA, the KESA conference. So as a student, usually you can actually get, you get some help from KESA as a student, if you present. So look for ways to be there. Even if you don't present, go there, attend, network. That's a, a good place to network. God bless you all and have a good night. Thank you, thank you. Keegan, exercise physiology is in demand. So send me your resume tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Send it tomorrow, I might, might be able to yeah, send it tomorrow. Okay, let's right, see. Uh, Karen Omosa. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Harun Omosa from Youngstown, Ohio. Okay. I graduated this summer with a master's in chemistry. Basically, I was doing organic chemistry. I got admission to the University of Alabama at Birmingham for PhD, um, but I deferred until uh, fall next year. So for now, I'm going for OPT. I have applied for a, to a few jobs. I have not landed any. And I think today's presentation okay. enlightened oh, me in a way. We're almost there. Except for yeah, so when, when you are in a lab and you participate 
uh, you do your research, but you are in a group and it's a project, either you are picking up or continuing with what was done. And there's that temptation of saying, in the lab, we were doing this. So today I've learned that I should not say that, and I know I've said it. So I should say, I did this. So it was a good presentation, and I hope I'm going to get my OPT. If there's any need, I'd be happy to get one. Great, great. Congratulations. Congratulations. So I think there is a, your colleague is here who is also University of Alabama. What is his name? Uh, Moffat. Yeah, Moffat, yes. Okay, yes. let's see who is uh, Amos. Amos has spoken, right? Not yet. Okay, good. Amos has <laughs> Okay. Um, my name is Amos Kipkirkir. I'm currently in a community college okay. taking a uh, prerequisite to what uh, nursing degree. Uh, I graduated actually last year with bachelor's in uh, health science. And I decided like, let me do nursing because it is my passion. So I'm currently in Virginia doing that prerequisite and uh, I will be transferring to North Carolina this coming semester. Okay, Karibu Nyumbani, shoot me an email. <laughs> okay, yeah, good. Yeah. Dr. Wanyama and I in North Carolina, so we'll be more than glad to assist. Karibu. Yeah, Karibu. Karibu. Uh, Emmanuel Wasonga. Oh. Uh, hi, everyone. Yeah, I am uh, Emmanuel uh, Maloba Wasonga. I am a PhD candidate. I'm doing chemistry, uh, organic chemistry specifically. I have like a year and a half left um, at Michigan State University. Thanks though for today's presentation. I just uh, learned a lot. <laughs> chemists in the house. Chemists, I hope you're getting together. We actually have a group for chemists. So Moffat, I hope, are you in that WhatsApp group? Oh, the chemistry WhatsApp group? Not yet. Okay. Uh, I'll you join you on yeah, Joe, Joe, Joe will take your names. And Joe, can you get their contacts so you can put them in that group? So we have a WhatsApp group because we have so many chemists. Right. We have 66 people, 67 people already. And we have about four mentors in that chemist group. So yeah, we have a, a group for chemists. Uh, James, Sylvia. Good evening, everyone. My name is Sylvia Ayeko. I am a PhD candidate in health promotion and behavioral sciences at the University of Texas. Health Science Center, and I'm really glad to be here. And thanks for the great presentation and all the words of wisdom. And tell us what you did at CASA and what you won. You presented at CASA and you, how was your experience presenting? Encourage them to come and present. <laughs> yes, I presented at CASA um, about a study that I did um, based on the literature in Kenya. And the review was very good. Um, the professors are great, great feedback, um, great networking experiences, great volunteer experiences. And thank you for everything. And uh, I got, a, what is it? But yeah, we, we got awarded. I got second place in the student presentation. So I'd encourage everyone to come and learn, new students, come and learn. and. It's a, a, a good way to get your foot in the field um, as you attend other big yeah. Great, so you got a presentation, you did well, you got feedback, you have a lot of mentors, you have a lot of recommenders. If you call any of us, we'll stop everything and take care of you, okay? Dory M. Hey, my baby. Uh, hello, everybody. Most important part is Malaysia. My name is Doral Kaz Monoko, Dori Monoko. I'm a graduate student at the University of Pittsburgh, uh, studying Master of Science in Quantitative Economics. Okay. Uh, I graduate, I will graduate next year, April, and I'm looking forward to get a job in as a data science scientist. Great, great, great. Congratulations, congratulations. Thank you. Stay, stay connected, Kesa and Kesa, we're here, we'll connect together. Let's see, uh, Beth Maturi. We have Beth, Josephine Mwangi, and Kevin in that order. Beth? Okay. Um, 
Hello, so my name is Beth Muturi. I'm doing a master's in artificial intelligence. I'm currently in the University of Bridgeport. She's in Connecticut. Yes. Are you, uh, oh, you're doing a master's, right? Yes, in artificial intelligence, yes. Okay, that's great. Very good, very good. Uh, we have, let's see. Kevin, who did I say? I think I said Josephine and then Kevin. Yes, Josephine. Hi, uh, my name is Josephine Mwangi. I'm a PhD student at School of Public Health at Indiana University, Bloomington. I did present in CASA in 2018. I was hoping to present this this year and I had my abstract accepted, but because of an unavoidable circumstances, I couldn't, but hopefully next year. I'm currently working on my qualifying exam two weeks due. So I'm hoping for the best. And thank you so much for the presentation and for the forum. Great, great, great. Good to see you again. We look forward, we'll be, we will be in Dallas again. So we hope to see you, those who presented and won, they know that you know we took care of them, right, Sylvia? We took great care of them, right, Joe? And so don't miss out. Okay, thank you. Yep, yep. All right, let's see. Kevin, Kevin, Veronica. We're almost done. Which Kevin? Kevin Attendee. Oh, you're right, Kevin Atande. Kevin Atande. Oh, Kelvin Atande, not Kevin. Kelvin. Hi, guys. I just got the link, and they have been so resourceful. I'm in the field of analytical chemistry, and a bit passionate about IT, and I really look forward to getting some guidance and I'll have to join you over there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Don't so take the number we can put you with. Like I said, we have a group of chemistry chemists and we have about three mentors there, three professors who are working with our group. Veronica, I'm with Thank you, Kevin. Hi, everyone. First, thank you for the good presentation. This is Veronica. I'm a college student at Tacoma College here in Washington, but uh, I first was in Jackson College in Michigan. That was last year, and I feel like I wasted the whole of the entire last year. But now, thanks to Joel Joseph, he introduced me to Casey that uh, it's indeed home. So I'm just trying to, I, I'm really not sure of what I want, but I know I love maths. I want to do something related to maths, though I did social work, BA in Kenya, mm -hmm. but it was just, I was called like a job student and I, I didn't get that opportunity to change or do whatever I wanted to do. So I just continued with it. But right now <laughs> I'm a bit focused <laughs> and uh, uh, I'm looking forward like to join masters and do data science. Dory too has been motivating me and uh, yeah. I have, I always tell Joel he's my big mentor. So I'm open to other mentors, particularly in the field of data science. And then maybe once I start interacting with them, I'll really know what I want, but mm. I am here to be helped. Like I've said, I wasted my entire last year and I've been paying fee on my own. And you know how hard it is because I was doing something related to nursing. Then all of a sudden, I just realized, no, biology is not me. So I had to stop it and find something else that I am able to do. Thank you so much. I really love Casey. I'm always attending the Zoom meetings, whether for help or not. Yeah, I'm here to stay. Thank you. Thank you so much. I need to introduce you to Penia, Dr. Kamina. She is a professor in math, but she's also a nurse. So very interesting. So I'll go ahead and connect you. Uh, who is there? Betty, Betsy, Betsy, and then John Irungu and Alice. I think that will be it. Betsy. Okay. Betsy. Hi, everyone. Hi, everyone. This is Betsy, and I joined the group late, so I missed the presentation part, but I hope there will be a recording for the previous sections. And um, I'm a master's student uh, doing family 
master's in family and consumer science, majoring in nutrition, and I'll be graduating in December. And from there, I was hoping to change my career to data science like Veronica. So that I will start doing it from January after graduating with master's. Betty, that is interesting. You know, you know how much nutrition is on demand. demand? <laughs> Get your certification as a nutritionist. I, I could use one too, so I can stop eating ugali and gaining all this weight. <laughs> So the problem is with the uh, licensing and getting registered here. I have to do other courses that I had done in Kenya. So it's a lot of work and I have a baby. So I, I don't want to do the internship. That's true. That's true. Oh, well, reach out to any of us. Yeah. We're here if we need somebody to talk to. I went to school with kids, so I understand. <laughs> I had two babies when I was doing my PhD. So it was not, oh wow yep i had to yeah, it was not easy uh, uh johnny yeah. rungu and then alice oh yeah hi everyone uh yeah my name is johnny rungu i'm a, a graduate student i'm taking my masters at the university of the district of columbia uh, in washington dc yeah i'm taking a master's in computer science and i'll be graduating next may Yep. We're going to have a big graduation ceremony. Oh, <laughs> congratulations, Alice. Yeah, thank you. Alice. Hi, my name is Alice, and I was invited by um, Veronica. I'm in contact with Professor Joel, and also Dory is my friend. I am not currently in school. I am looking forward to start school in the near future. So I was joining this to hear what other people are doing. And I've been really encouraged, especially right now looking for a job. Uh, there was a lot of, um, you know, rebukes, especially like what to do, especially if, in, uh, like if you're going for an interview, you must do your research and not just attend it being like, what do you guys do? So I'm very, uh, I've learned a lot. And um, I've been in the US for 12 years now. Um, I'm married and with kids, but I just didn't pursue school. I kind of stopped everything else just so I could focus on my family. But now my kids are grown. So I'm looking into like pursuing my career now in the near future. So thank you so much. Great, great. We're here to help. I think, did I miss anybody? I think I got everybody, right? Well, thank you so much. Uh, Gilbert, do you want to say anything? Gilbert and Kevin and Kelvin, Gilbert. I'll hand over uh, to, the, to our leaders. Uh, uh, I would like to thank everyone who found time to join us this evening. Uh, it was great having you. Uh, let's uh, remind everyone in yeah, the Kenyan fraternity, we are a big number here. and. Uh, uh, it's unfortunate that when we meet, we'll meet like 30 people, yet we are more than 4,000.